Hey folks, I'm Kevin, and today I want to talk about decentralized identity. Now, does this sound like the future to you? Well, that's because it is, and basically everything we do in terms of confirming our identity with like our driver's licenses, social security numbers, and different mechanisms to log into websites, that can all change in the future to a decentralized model, which gives us a ton of benefits. And Microsoft is also leading the way in the space. So in this video, I'm going to tell you all about this area and this topic. So if you're curious to learn more, just sit back, relax, and just keep on watching. Okay, so first of all, what is decentralized identity, right? If you think about it, traditional ID systems, you have to go through centralized sources to confirm your identity and then get access to whatever it is you want to do, like a website, a product, a service, something like that. But decentralized ID systems or DID, they put control of your personal information back into your own hands. So you are the one to decide and allow and manage when your info is shared, what, when, and with whom. And there's already several platforms actually working on this next step in terms of our identity infrastructure on the internet. But Microsoft is a main player in the space. They're building one and it's called ION or Identity Overlay Network. It's completely open source. It's a layer two solution built on the Bitcoin blockchain. So that's great news for all of you Bitcoin aficionados out there. That makes it free from censorship. Anyone can review and contribute to the system. Now, ION is just the name of Microsoft's system, right? And you can think of it like Bitcoin's layer two payment network is called the Lightning Network, but it's still a layer two network on Bitcoin. Now, what is ION in a nutshell? Essentially, it contains DIDs or decentralized IDs, which lets you create credentials like digital certificates, licenses, any digital document with some sort of identity involved in it. And a DID is a globally unique identifier which doesn't need any central authority for registration, right? Since they operate with decentralized ledgers like Bitcoin's blockchain. Now, users like you and I can use these to log into websites without using things like Facebook or Google login anymore, which is not preferred because they invade your privacy, as we all know. Now, these DID systems utilize digital wallets that we crypto people are familiar with, right? But in this case, it's not to store your own coins, but rather to store info surrounding your DID and allowing for access to it. So why do we even need this, right? Because we know many corporations use and abuse our PII or personal identifiable information and in 2018, Facebook leaked information about 87 million user profiles. Equifax breach affected 147 million people with very sensitive info like social security number, driver's licenses, credit card information, and so forth. Centralized identity systems are super vulnerable and insecure. So let's take a look at a few ways decentralized systems can help. But first before that, a quick announcement from our longtime patrons, Crypto.com. I use their Crypto.com debit card, but I want to share with you two news pieces surrounding them lately. First is they partner with PayID. So instead of giving someone your long Ethereum address or Bitcoin address, you can give them a PayID tied to your wallet address and they could send it to you easily. And there's millions of people that have a PayID already. So this makes it a lot more easy to use with this existing network. This is just like Venmo or Cash App, right? You can send it to your friends identifier number rather than their email or their bank code, for example. Next up is Crypto.com's exchange, which launched a beta in last November of 2019, has gone a lot of growth recently and built up to a more full functional and polished platform. Um, I'm just going to leave this here, but they have a revamped matching engine, much better performance and throughput, a REST and WebSocket API, redesigned architecture to improve scalability, security, latency, all things very important to traders who want something very solid and professional, and then just more availability and resilience as well. So definitely go check that out. They're not available to like US, Hong Kong, and China, I believe, 
but they are available to the rest of the world. So if you're looking for something and already use their debit cards, for example, then go check them out. Okay, so back to this DID benefits of these systems. First is the copies of it, right? Because if you lose your original copy, you can re easily regain your ID. Centralized identity systems take a long time to recover from scratch. You have to call in, you have to visit in person and wait for the mail, for example. And it could even cost a lot of money. So the underserved population, this could be really hard on them if they ever lose some ID source. But the DID system can issue duplicate ID proofs thanks to blockchain and other decentralized tech. So this is really helpful. And you can easily regain access if you lose the original copy. But of course, this means you have to take extra care to save these duplicate proofs. And it could be a little bit tech savvy needed, at least initially, before the rest of the tools are out there to help you manage this. Number two is that it can be integrated with Internet of Things, right? Because now with the DID system, it gives us the opportunity to manage IoT devices securely. There's a lot more IoT devices in our everyday lives. Some of these store sensitive data about us and usage data. So with a decentralized infrastructure, we can secure them and let users decide what type of info to make available to these devices and in win situations. Number three is self-sovereignty of our info over our own identity. You own and control every aspect of your digital life in this case. Services can view your personal info, but they can't alter it without your permission. Number four has to do with privacy and tracking, right? Because sometimes we give away personal info to service providers to gain access to the internet or their services. They track you and make money off you by selling your data without your consent. This can be alleviated in some ways with DID systems and in conjunction with other technology like VPNs and so forth so that they can't get unauthorized access to your data. Last but not least, there's less chance of a breach in the system because everyone can sign up for different services online and give them their personal data. A centralized case, hackers just need to attack the centralized repository like Equivax, like Facebook, for example. But in a decentralized system, hackers can only attack personal data stores like your computer, my computer, rather than just one repository. So it makes it less worth their time. That kind of makes sense, right? So what are some final thoughts, right? There are many platforms approaching this space, but exciting to see tech giants like Microsoft working on this too. This can help us see DIDs come to life sooner and get mass adoption, and also helps just with raising general awareness about blockchain and other decentralized technology. So thank you everyone for watching. What do you think about decentralized IDs? Do you like this more in-depth topic? Let me know what other topic you want me to dive into and I'll happily do so. As always, give me a like, subscribe down below if you haven't already and why not check out these videos right here as well to catch more from our channel. This is Kevin, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch you guys next time.